Hey guys, it's Bruce from UbiaDrone. I'm going to do a quick uh, tutorial on how to use the LaForge configurator so that you can get version 2.0 on any of your devices. It doesn't matter if it's version 1 with the scroll wheel, version 1.1 with the indented scroll wheel, the first version of the buttons, the second version of the buttons, or the ones that's coming with the doors now. This, all of our firmwares are compatible with any of the devices that you own. So if you have an old scroll wheel one and you want to turn into the capture the flag game, then you can do that as well and then use your button one as your goggle module. So anyways, let's get started. What you're going to want to do is um, you want to go ahead and load up the uh, LaForgeFPV.com and then you want to download the firmware. So you can go up here to the firmware screen and then from there you'll click Windows Download uh, and that'll download the software. I've already downloaded it so I won't uh, put you through that. Uh, the Mac download's not available yet. We're still working on that, but right now we're using just for Windows, and it has to be a 64-bit machine. Uh, the other thing is, is that you can use it on a Mac machine. You just have to be sure that you have a, um, uh, when you extract the LaForge updater in your parallel desktop, you'll want to make sure that the updater is on the root drive of your C drive, and then it should, it should work on a parallel desktop or possibly even a boot camp. Uh, okay, so once you get that downloaded, you're going to want to go to Google. Uh, from Google, you're going to want to go to uh, Zadig, Z-A-D-I-G. Then you're going to see this Zadig.akeo.ie. And this is the drivers. This is, drivers are also located on uh, the LaForge website, or, or the LaForge um, Facebook group, rather. Uh, go down here. You're going to download Zadig for Windows Vista or later. Uh, go ahead and click on that, download it, and then once it's downloaded, you're going to want to, um, whatever folder it's in, then that's fine. So I've got both of them here. I've got my LaForge updater and i got my Zadig 2.2 in here. So then the next step that you're going to want to do is um, you can go ahead and extract it. It doesn't matter when you do that. So I've got WinRAR installed, so the zip file is going to look different if you're just using Windows on Zipper. So I'm going to ex extract it to the LaForge updater folder. I'm gonna let that do its thing. Uh, while it's doing that, you can plug in the USB ASP. Uh, once Windows identifies it, it might go through the device setup process and things like that. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is open up Zadig, and then um, it might say it's untrusted, something like that might appear. You're just gonna go ahead and click OK, yes, let it go through. Um, once you're in Zadig, you wanna go to Options, List All Devices. Now you want to be careful you don't select the wrong device here because you could redo one of your drivers for your keyboard or something like that. So here you're going to go to USB ASP. Uh, I've already have this installed so mine's going to say replace. Yours might say none and then it might say replace driver or install driver. Whatever the case might be for you, you're going to want to make sure that it's the Win USB. I'm going to click replace driver. And then it's going to install the USB driver successfully installed. Now I've got USB ASP as attached to the Win USB driver, and you can close Zadig. Once that's closed, you can come back over here to the LaForge updater, and then you're going to have your files here, and you're going to look for LaForgeUpdate.exe. Now you can right-click this, send it to your desktop as a shortcut, then you have access to it whenever you want, or you can just access the exe file uh, however you, you are comfortable doing. So you're going to double-click that LaForgeUpdate.exe, and give it a second for it to load the files that it needs to load. Once the LaForge update is available, the one thing that you'll notice is it's going to say USB ASP at the top. If it does not say USB ASP at the top, then this is not going to work. And that means you're going to have a driver issue. If you have the driver issue after doing Zadig and the other things, jump on the Facebook group, a LaForge FPV Facebook group, and ask the questions so that we can assist you there. Or you can always go to youbuyadrone.com. You can click the contact us, uh, open an account there at our help desk, and then we can help assist you there. But most likely the, face group, uh, the, the Facebook group is going to be much faster for you to do. So now that you've got the USB ASP up here, you can click on the firmware button. And that's going to list uh, or open the um, area where you can select your firmware. So you're going to select your hardware. It's the main module. We don't have uh, a different firmware for different versions, like I said. The scroll wheel or the buttons, it's all the same firmware. It'll work on any of them. So if you bought our product with, from the very first rollout last year, this firmware will work with you and it will improve 
uh, your your experience with the little forge modules. Um, then you're going to go ahead and go to your firmware. Uh, right now we've got our main firmware version 2.0. We'll put some of the uh, older code on here. Some of the guys like the older 1.7. Uh, we'll get those updated a little bit later this week. Um, down here we have our analyzer firmware, which is the more advanced version that we rolled out. And then we have capture the flag uh, and the um, RF lap timer firmware. So for most people, they're going to use the main firmware. And then you're going to go ahead and click enable customization. And now when you select the enable customization, that's going to give you a whole nother list of features down at the bottom. Now, the one thing to note is that any of these features besides the boot logo can be loaded or changed at any time later via the OLED menu that is on the LaForge device, including your, the um, call sign, the startup mode, the startup frequencies, quick boot, L-band, all of these things can be accessed later. The only one that you have to do now if you want one is the custom boot logo. Now the custom boot logo now, that's not going to work when um, the boot logo is not going to show when you have enable quick boot. So as you can see, it does not display the boot logos on the startup because it's quick boot. Uh, so anyways, you've got two, two options here. With the um, boot image, you can do one of the pre-selected ones that are here. So there's a whole list of them, all of our vendors, uh, a Mr. Steel one, a Rotor Riot one, just a skull. So all of our vendors, I'll go ahead and select UBAD since that's um, us. And then you'll see that it pops UBAD up here. Now you can invert the colors and if it's not displaying right, you can do it that way as well. Now if you don't want one of these, you can go to Browse and you can select a, another logo. So I selected that Corvette. It's a high res, you know, probably a 12 megapixel picture, but you can see that it did its best to show uh, what that is. So if you have a simple logo for your chapter for multi-GP or your, your flying group, it's just a set of wings or something simple, then most likely you can just import that um, image and it will do its best to do it for you. So um, like I said, you can select the picture or you can use one of the pre-selected ones. So we'll go back, we'll select, we'll select you bad. And then the call sign I'll leave is, uh, I'll put you bad Bruce, you bad Bruce. And then you'll see that that shows up on the screen as well to show you how that's gonna appear. Uh, you can select your startup mode. I like to start up in manual mode myself. My startup frequency is generally 5645. I don't mind the boot in process, so I'm gonna just leave the um, normal boot on. You can also enable L band. And L band is going to be for the low bands that are coming out in some of the, the video transmitters or the pit mode. The one thing that I will say is that if you don't need L band for pit mode, don't be using these frequencies in the United States. Um, that's just not uh, legal. So stay off of those bands. You don't want to cause anybody trouble and, and just stay out of them. Uh, you can turn on your, your speaker. Of course, the speaker only works if you're, you have the diversity module plugged in. Since the speaker is attached to the diversity side, if it's not plugged on, you're not going to have beeps. Um, you can select by channel order or by frequency. Most people like to go by channel. That way they are always on that uh, A1, A2, A3, or E1, A2. Uh, if you do it by frequency, then it's going to jump around. It's going to go from 5645 to 5650 or, or whatever the next sequence is. And I'll jump around bands as well. Uh, the diversity mode. You can do auto, or if you only wanted to use uh, the main module or the diversity module, then you can select that individually. And then the diversity speed, and this is how long it controls to switch antennas. So if you're in a very, very multi-path in area, and it's constantly causing the antenna to go back, we've, we've seen some of this happen before. And for those who've flown in car parks or things like that, the antennas just go crazy, and you're going to really degrade your signal that way. Um, the best bet is to just go to the slowest. So again, this is something you can set later when you get to that environment that you're flying, you can adjust this setting. So if you want slowest, then you can do that. If you're, uh, you know that you're in an area that you just need to use your patch antenna or you need to get a little bit better penetration through your, from your crosshair antenna, um, then you can go ahead and select the fastest um, switching so that you can switch to it, switch back to the Omni so that you can still get the better 
um, range behind you or wherever you're flying. So just select that accordingly and you can play with that again when you get to the field and you, you feel like it's not working good enough, um, well enough. Anyways, so once you do that, all you're going to have to do is come back up here to flash. Uh, I don't have a module with me right now to flash, but the um, idea is all, all the same. Actually, I just found one here on the desk. Let me... Um, let me get this USB ASP in here. So you'll go ahead and line up the pins like you see on the screen. You'll want to go ahead and plug this in. Um, your lights will flash up on the module. You'll probably get all three of them. You can click flash. That's how you know you got a good one. Then the blue light will start to flash once it starts to write. Um, it'll go through all of the writing. Um, it'll take a second here. And after it finishes the writing to the flash, it's going to go back through and it's going to write the custom settings. So that's where your boot logo and things like that are going to come into play. So once it's finishing with this, it should switch over to customizing. So it takes, it takes like 30 seconds or so, and then it'll be done. Now what you'll notice is that um, now that's, that's complete. The one thing is, is that when it is complete, it'll flash, and as long as it's connected still, you're going to have a, uh, you'll see it boot up. Now, if you do flash, it initializes, it's starting to write, and let's just say it fails. You let go of it. Update on successful. Check the connection. Okay, that means you need to reattach the USB ASP. Now, you're going to notice that your module won't, won't boot up anymore. But don't worry, you can't brick these if you're using our firmware. You can't brick our devices with our firmware. You just need to reconnect. You're only going to get the red light this time. And then when you click flash, it's going to initialize. And then as long as you have a good connection, then it will start to do the update. So that pretty much is how you're going to update the uh, module. If you have any questions, again, jump over to the LaForge FPV Facebook group, and um, we can take care of you there. And... Um, I hope you enjoy it, and we'll talk to you later.